This is the African history class and my name Black Rasta. Now they say, until the lion learns to tell his own story, the tale of the hunt would always glorify the hunter. That is why we are telling our story right now. The side of the truth. We have heard his story, her story. We have heard their story. Time now to tell our own story. The lion story. This is the African history class. And today, we have a very interesting story we want to share with you. A story that will blow your mind. A story that you have never been told. Even if you have ever heard this story, then you have only heard bits and pieces of the story. Today we are telling you the whole story in a very beautiful style. And I am most excited that you are my audience. Today we are talking about one of the white women around Kwame Nkrumah. And this one is special. How special? Today we are talking about June Milne. June as in J-U-N-E. Milne as in M-I-L-N-E. June Milne was white. She was born in Melbourne, Australia. Far away in Australia, Melbourne, she was born. And she was born in the month of June, specifically in 1920. Today we are talking about June Mill. On the 22nd day of June in 1920, 11 years after Kwame Nkrumah was born, she was born, but far away in Melbourne, Australia. And when she was born, her childhood was so beautiful and nice. But her mother, after some time, met a very wealthy suitor. Another man came into her life after her own father and mother separated. And her mother decided to move with the new man who had come in so wealthy. And they moved all the way to England, to Cambridge. And when they arrived in England, she had to start schooling. Her schooling days in Cambridge were so beautiful. She remembered her days in Australia, but it looked like she liked her days in England even more. She went to school in England, backed by a wealthy father. It looked like it was an interesting time. She went to a private school right there in England, the Cheltenham Ladies College. And over there, she was so studious. She loved to study history. History was the subject that she liked most. She proceeded to grab a degree in history at the Westfield College. Westfield College. That was where she grabbed her degree in history. She would not end there. She went to the University of London where she grabbed a PhD in history. Everything about her was history. Now during the war, she also worked with the Americans to supply provisions and so many different things like that to the British and some other such people. Everywhere she went, she picked up a book and it was all about history. 
She read about Europe, read about the Americas, and she enjoyed most the story of Africa. She went deep into the study of the history of Africa. It was then she realized that all the history she studied in school, she would have never called herself a true historian if she hadn't gone into African history privately, even after school. Today we are talking about June Mill. Her story is about to get thick. Now the interesting thing in London for her was the fact that she was able to get very good education. And she loved it. Watch it. It wasn't long when things started to happen. In 1944. Remember she was born on the 22nd day of June in 1920. So in 1944, how old was she? 24 years. She met a man in England. And he was a pilot. An RAF pilot. Yes. An RAF pilot. Royal Air Force pilot. He was not just any pilot. But he was a pilot with distinction who won a lot of awards and accolades. Now the war was over. And when the war was over, things started to happen. She realized that she had to take on a new challenge. Remember during the war, she was working with the Americans, providing provisions to the British and so many other such people. Now that the war was over, that outfit was closed and she became the chief examiner of the London University. Chief examiner of the London University. And there she was responsible for advanced level examination and she supervised the marking of papers. But after the war, the RAF pilot also put aside his job. He retired. And he had to grab a new job. What job was he going to grab? Look at the interesting thing. From pilot, he became a printing house worker. Can you believe that? It wasn't because he actually needed a job. His wife was that woman that could be called a historian. She loved to read and she loved to write. And he gradually nursed that as a hobby in him. So after he finished flying the plane, he went to work in a printing press, the Thomas Nelson Educational Press in London. Oh my God, interesting times. From a pilot to a printing house or a publishing house worker, he enjoyed it. And look at the interesting thing. He would pick up this book, pick up that book, and they believed that one day they would own their own press, publishing house in their total retirement. That was something very interesting we all need to remember from flying straight up to the printing or the publishing house that was where he met Kwame Nkrumah but what was the name of the husband of John Mill he was called Evanda Van Mill Evanda Van Mill that was the name of the husband. The RAF pilot, super pilot, Evander Van Mill. Interesting. So when he met Nkrumah at the printing press, the Thomas Nelson Educational Press, he encouraged Nkrumah to publish his books with that printing press. 
And Nkrumah said, well, I can do it. It's a publishing house. But I have some other ones I'm considering in Ghana. So I want to do it in Ghana. But he convinced Nkrumah. And Nkrumah agreed that, okay, I will do something with you. Then he came up again. He said, my wife is also a publisher. And the way you are busy, you will need my wife. Listen. The way you, Nkrumah, you are so busy, you will need my wife. And Nkrumah asked, why would I need your wife? He said, I told you already. You are a busy man. My wife would make sure that he will cover all your tracks. And Nkrumah jokingly said, I don't have any tracks to cover. He said, apart from that, remember that you are somebody who is at the forefront of African independence and the struggle for liberation for the whole of Africa. My wife is so knowledgeable in African history. And Nkrumah smiled again and said, no white person knows African history more than us black people. And Van Mille jokingly said, don't take that for granted. My wife is extra knowledgeable about African history. Again, let me warn you, Mr. Nkrumah. Don't tell me that you have no footprints to cover. Every public person has at least a few skeletons in his cardboard. And that has to be taken care of. Nkrumah smiled. They had a drink. And quickly, he left. Evander Van Mill got home and told the wife, can you believe who I met today? He's a leader of the struggle in Africa. I saw him around our printing press and I spoke with him. And he agreed to publish his books with us. John Mill asked, oh, is he a writer? He said, yes, he's a writer, an astute writer. Immediately, she went quiet. 1958, a year after the independence of this beautiful country, Ghana, Kwame Nkrumah was in England. And when he arrived, he was at the Grosvenor Hotel at Park Lane. Interestingly, it was around the same area Evander Van Mill was hanging. He was hanging around that same area and he saw Nkrumah. He walked up to Nkrumah and said, do you recognize me? Said, of course I recognize you. How far have you gone with the books? And Ivanda said, we are working on them and about to publish the very first set. He said, remember I told you about my wife. Please, I've asked her to come over. He said, since when? You didn't know I was here. He said, the moment I saw you, I placed a call to her and asked her to come and meet with you. And Nkrumah said, you see all the people around? And there were so many people in front of Nkrumah's hotel, Ghanaians and other Africans. They were there to listen to Nkrumah give them some hope about their own independence. Oh my God. Listen to the interesting thing that happened. Nkrumah was talking to people from one person to the other. And then he came up into the lounge and asked, Is Junil here? Is Junil here? I would love to talk to her. And Junil sprang up and said, I am here. He said, Come for a few minutes and excuse the rest of the people. And Junil told Nkrumah, I hold a PhD from the London University and it's a history PhD. Nkrumah said, What? PhD in history? then you must be a radical, a revolutionist. They smiled, and that was it. They started working together. She flew all the way from England. Her new home was now in Ghana. And what was her duty? To make sure that all the publications of Kwame Nkrumah were done. And remember, there was already a house, right? Yes, the Thomas Nelson Educational Press, where Nkrumah had signed a contract to publish his books. 
it was moving on nicely and beautifully. And you know, Nkrumah had a ghost writer called Erica Powell. She and Junil became friends. After all, they both had the English experience. One was Australian and one was English. They had something in common, England. They became friends. Junil would not sleep. She would always ask Nkrumah to go to bed. And she would stay awake to make sure everything around Nkrumah was done. She worked so hard. And everything that was written by Kwame Nkrumah or written by Erica Powell, it was June Mill who would sit down and make sure that all the historical references were right. And make sure that all the spellings were correct. They called that proofreading. June Mill did that. Hey, the story is about to get thicker. The plot is hotter. At this juncture, I would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel, YouTube channel. It's called the African History Class. African is spelled A-F-R-E-E-K-A-N. History is the same spelling and class is K-L-A-S-S. Do us a favor. Click and subscribe and click on the notification button so that we give you authentic histories like this one. Hear me now. The work was done every time. Nkuma would wake up late in the night and Junmil would be at her table taking notes and proofreading. Nkuma enjoyed the way she worked. And remember, it was the husband who gave Junmil to Nkuma and said this will be the best gift for you. And Nkuma one day said, yes, that truly was one of the best things I ever had all my life. You're going to hear more. So Junil and Nkuma started writing more and more and more. 1966, there was a coup. You know how the coup happened? We're going to have another segment where we'll tell you all the nitty gritties of the coup that happened and derailed Africa. But for now, to suffice it, the CIA, the FBI, used some etchings in Ghana and outside Ghana to uproot Nkrumah. And hear this interesting thing. The day that Nkrumah was invited to come to Vietnam, in fact, Hanoi, so that he would help to broker peace between the feuding countries, Jun Mill told him, do not go. But Nkrumah insisted that he would go because the president of America had been calling over and over Lyndon B. Johnson. He was a traitor. They had made sure the plot was ready so that Nkrumah would just drive into it and be grabbed like a common wild animal. And Jumil said, don't go. But the governor the president, the ambassador, everybody was calling Nkrumah. And Junmil herself was convinced. Now the last call came when Nkrumah was editing a book that he had already written. And he wanted to do the final editing before passing it out to Junmil to finish the proofreading. What was the book? It was about the Congo Valley. And he was standing right there, as you can see in this photograph. Standing with Kwame Nkrumah. Whilst Nkrumah was looking at the book. And Junmil listened to the phone call that came in from the President of America. After she heard the voice of Lyndon B. Johnson asking Nkrumah to come. She smiled and said, well, you know you are the Osajifo. If you don't go... Nothing is going to happen. You are the president of Africa. And they know if they don't have you, then they don't have Africa. Well, just go for a few days and come. Initially, she said, don't go. And after she heard the voice of the American president, she was convinced that it was important for the Osage to go. Little did she know that that was the end. Nkrumah left. And there was a coup d'etat. A couple of days after, boom, 
Nkrumah was overthrown. And when Nkrumah was overthrown, see the interesting thing that happened. The printing press decided not to publish Nkrumah's books again. The husband of June Mill, Van Mill, and the printing press, the Thomas Nelson printing press, said that if they continued printing the books and publishing them, the Ghanaian people who had become so angry with Kwame Nkrumah will boycott all the books that they published at the printing press. Yes, right there at the publishing house. Do you understand? Nkrumah's books are published here. Nkrumah has been removed in a coup d'etat. If we continue publishing his books, the Ghanaian people are going to get angry with us and boycott all the books that we publish, including others that Nkrumah never even wrote. So we have stopped publishing their books. June Mill wept. She couldn't believe it. She sat with Nkrumah and told Nkrumah that, listen, nothing is wrong. But June Mill was a writer. She ghost wrote the autobiography of Lumumba, of the Congo. She ghost wrote it. It was so beautiful that they had to give her an award. They knew it was not Lumumba who wrote it because Lumumba didn't speak English that much. But the book was originally published in English. So there must have been an English-speaking person who wrote it. And they were looking for her to award her. But the system, the junta at that time, that removed Lumumba and killed him, was only getting ready to kill her. Because she wrote such a book that was so good. When Nkrumah was in exile in Guinea, oh, she visited Nkrumah there. And she knew Nkrumah loved chocolates. She asked Nkrumah why he loved chocolate so much. He said, I come from a country that is the king of cocoa. And the cocoa we produce is unique. Nobody else has that. If you can't get me Ghana cocoa, forget it. There was only one country in the world that Nkrumah would eat chocolates from. And that was England. And that was where June Mill brought the chocolates from a certain specific brand of chocolates and they will have fun and return remember all this while she was married to her husband van mill see the interesting thing things were going good now the publishing house says we are not going to publish anything about you anymore and june mill came together with nkrumah and said you know what we can have our own publishing house and they had one in 1968, 1968, they had the Panaf books. It was a publishing company. Nkrumah started with John Mill far away in Guinea Conakry. And it boomed. She helped Nkrumah here and there, still working with Nkrumah, even though there was no salary. She loved Nkrumah. And she was faithful to her husband. What a woman. She supported Nkrumah. When the news of the coup came, she was interviewed and she said, you have removed the best man that you would ever have in Africa. His dreams will come to pass because a lot of them have been documented. And when you follow the blueprint, things will happen for Africa. That was what June Mill said. June Mill worked so hard with Nkrumah. Hey, listen to the interesting thing. Nkrumah fell ill. He was dying from cancer. And they took him all the way to Romania. In fact, the city of Bucharest, where he was going through therapy. You know who was with him daily? June Mill. June Mill was not Nkrumah's wife. His wife was Fatia Riz, or Fatia Nkrumah. But Junil flew all the way to Bucharest and was at Nkrumah's bedside 
till Nkrumah died. Of course, Erica Powell also visited, but she visited and left. But this one stayed there. The last time she saw Nkrumah, she said she knew that Nkrumah was dying. He had become frail. Nkrumah didn't have any money anymore. He had run out of money. And he didn't want to ask the Kuture to replenish him with any money. That was how disciplined Nkrumah was. You remember Nkrumah was the one who took Ghana's money and gave to Sekoture, Guinea, after the French people gave independence to Guinea, after Guinea voted to have independence, the only country out of the so-called Francophone. So the French got angry and packed out everything to make it uncomfortable for Sekoture to be able to rule the country. And Nkrumah told him, you know what? You have a brother in Ghana. He sent money, 10 million pounds. He gave to him and said, run the country. So when Nkrumah was overthrown, it was just befitting for Sekoture to invite him over. And he came. So that was what happened. My brother, my sister. And Kwame Nkrumah became frail. Every day he was losing it till he died in 1972. But before he died, the only will Kwame Nkrumah ever wrote in his head. Of course, that did not mean he didn't think about his wife and children. But the only thing he muttered out of his mouth before he died, he said, you will become an executress. An executrix of my estate. He gave all the books that he wrote, the publishing rights and everything to John Mayo and said, you deserve this. You are one of the greatest human beings I've ever met. Take it. In 1987, she flew to Conakry long after Nkrumah had died and she saw that Nkrumah still had some manuscripts that he wrote she had access into Nkrumah's bank. Remember, she used to visit Nkrumah. And when she went, she saw some of the papers there. She carried them. The soldiers tried to make a lot of noise. Of course, that was after Sekoture was gone. She picked up everything. Everything. And came to publish that in the book known as the Guinea Years. I beg your pardon, the Conakry Years. The Conakry years. If you haven't read that, pick that up. We would never have seen that book had it not been John Neal. Of course. Erica Powell also goes and wrote some of the biographies of Nkrumah and some other such books. But this was the woman who protected the whole estate. She defended Nkrumah to death. Today, we remember this wonderful black woman. Today, we remember you. We remember you. You sacrificed your life. You left your husband. You came all the way to Africa to work with one man. And when you started working with this man, you saw the focus, the direction. You left everything, all your dreams in England and even Australia and stayed right here. It wasn't about the money. Even when Nkrumah was all broke, you were still with him. You even bought him chocolates and gave him pocket money. Oh, what a woman. June Mill. She granted an interview in which she said, the book that made them remove Nkrumah from power. I read that book over and over and I knew that the CIA was going to be very uncomfortable with that. But Nkrumah was bent on publishing it and I pushed him to publish it because it will outlive him and open the door and the eyes of Africans to a new Africa. Today we remember you, John Neal. Today we remember you. Today we honor you. She was born on the 22nd day of June, 
Maybe that's why she was called June. She took her husband's name, Mill, in 1920. She lived all the way until she died on the 7th of May in 2018. Today we remember you, mommy. Her husband died in 2006 and she remained unmarried. She was married to Nkuma in the spirit and kept the books that she helped Nkuma publish alive. Today we remember you. One of the greatest historians and publishers the world ever gave to us. Junmin. Mame. Dami Fadri. Mame, wuni yaminko. Ukwa chia nkuma. Chia nuwate. Chia nuwate. Misi Dami Fadri. Dwe, 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 ni amane uno. Oh, wuni yaminko, mame. Yeee, mame. Enti wako ampa. Oh, mame, enti wuna uda we. Mame, misi ko. Ko, 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 uni ya minko. Na fami ko biye. Mami, misi minu beko. Mami, au mami. Misi minu beko. Minu beko. Minu beko wate. Minu beko. Minu beko, minu beko. She died at the age of 97. From 1920. To 2018. She died. May her body, mind, and soul rest in perfect peace as we remember her. Ma ame jun miyo. Kone yamin ko. Yamin fa unkran siye wate. Fami ko wate. Demil fa duye. 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 Duye ni amane ono. Kone yamin ko. Ko. Today we are telling our history. History that you will not find on a silver platter. Authentic history. The lion story. Until the lion learns to tell his own story. The tale of the hunt would only glorify the hunter. I'm glad that I live to share this with you. Now in the burden of knowledge I ask you. Yes, in the burden of knowledge I ask you. How would the story of Junil impact your own life in contemporary times? In the burden of knowledge, I ask you, now that you know, what would you do? Be an annual mini of a fee, you zoom the Kagani, Mizaka, Yin, Yea, Pabango Bukayan, Fifia, Yan, Nukaina, Banae, who a bed, then Lele and Jima singer Bekune, Lele and Jima singer Berry. Hey! It's been the African History Club. Ila ila chinde la lenwa Ila mu wa ma tinda ba to mu Nda bie tete tete ka ba wela ne Jesu bie ngwen ngwen ne ka ba wela no Jesus, you're my only one.